In the years following 1956, much came to be known about the structure of DNA and the human genome. The possibility of cloning a human being was becoming a reality. As our brightest minds race to be the first to complete the endeavor. After a few short years, scientists reported the first promising results. A human being was cloned for the first time. The celebrations, however, were short-lived. The test subjects were unstable, their DNA damaged by the cloning process. All died within days. Moral objections to the technology turned to public outrage. Outrage turned to protests, and eventually protests turned to riots. Publicly, the research was discontinued. The military, however, was quick to understand the strategic potential of this research. Why stop at recreating life when it could be improved? Plans were drawn up to continue the research in total secrecy, far from the prying eyes of the world, deep below the surface of the ocean. The sea floor provides access to new, highly adapted life forms and ample DNA for experimentation. But the deep sea environment presents a significant challenge. You have been selected to lead a team of the best and brightest. The lives of the crew are in your hands. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to Surviving the Abyss. So what's this game about? Well, we're here to do research. Research on cloning to be exact. Research that the general population does not want it done. So we are here at the bottom of the ocean. Or at least we're at the ocean. I'm not sure if we're actually at the bottom. As you can see, I have just one structure right now. The central hub. This is what you get with at the start. As you go out into the ocean, you're going to be able to find resources. Scrap, steel deposits. You might be able to find small iron deposits, uh, maybe some quartz here and there. And this ties into one of the basic resources that you have in this game. Scrap steel, concrete, quartz glass, and iron. Now iron can be converted into steel, so this one kind of flows back into steel. And with steel, uh, sorry, um, into, yeah, no, into steel. So with steel, you can actually start building buildings. As for the advanced resources, aluminum or aluminium, depending on where you're from, Copper, lead, and eventually oil. Don't tell the Americans, they'll be here in a minute. We also have coal. Coal initially very important when it comes to generating power. Power is another one of your resources, and it is vital to keep everybody alive. Both power and oxygen are going to be instrumental in keeping your colony or keeping your research facility growing. Of course, this thing needs to be staffed, and for that we have 12 population, as well as 70 food. Now, one person takes one food per day, so my 70 food is going to last me a mere five days. This means I'm going to have to go after food production and make sure I can get that myself, rather than having to rely on the surface level. We also have types of genomes. This is something I'm going to be covering in a minute. When it comes to my ability to build, um, I can build everywhere in the light. So when it comes to, for example, this area here, I cannot build there because I don't know what's out there. And that is one of the most interesting things to me about surviving the abyss, the mystery element. It's a survival city builder and you generally don't know what's out there. On top of that, while you're trying to get research done, um, you also have to research upgrades for your own base. The game does this in a bit of a slightly less than ideal tech tree, because it's a tech tree with categories, which threw me off initially. Because the game only initially shows you the life support one, but you also have a tech tree for resources, power, population, exploration, and research and genetics. Now, this is just the tier 1 research. We also have tier 2 and tier 3, which I first have to unlock. 
I do believe that that research data you can get by doing your actual gene research. So eventually we're going to have to set up a research facility, a basic research lab, and this will produce research data per day. With that, you can then expand your base and make sure that you eventually get to human cloning. That is the eventual outcome. Now, you're not just facing threats from the outside, you're also potentially facing threats from the inside. Because if your crew turns out to be too unhappy, they might cause issues. And, well, we're doing highly experimental research into cloning. Who knows what comes out of these cloning labs eventually. So this is going to be a very adventurous, very mysterious playthrough. And for now, we're just going to get started. The key was kindly provided at my request by the developers, so thank you very much for that. I look very much forward to playing this in a series, and I hope you guys will join me for that. First things first, let's set up a research, uh, sorry, a resource node. This is sort of a buoy that says to my submarines, hey, this is the area where you can get stuff from. So when I move this thing around, you can see on the right-hand side, the right-hand display, what falls into the area of influence of that particular beacon. And um, I think this is initially a pretty decent one. This is going to give me some steel, quartz glass, and iron. And I also want one on this side because I saw that there was... Yeah, there's a fairly healthy amount of resources there too. Now you can see that these things go and say, hey, we don't actually have a submarine. That's that little icon. And that means you have to assign a submarine to one of these beacons before something actually happens. When it comes to submarines, I have a maximum of seven submarines. I have six, two of which are construction, three of which are mining, and one is a transport sub. Eventually, we'll be able to explore new things using exploration subs, but I first have to research those, I believe, and then build them. As for my mission log, I don't have any objectives just yet, but then again, I just fired the game up. So I suppose that we're going to be getting those in a minute. As for buildings, what are we going to need? We're going to need a coal generator. And when you place down or when you are about to place down one of these buildings, you see that it has these lines. Now, these things indicate where a tunnel can go. So with this, I can then set up a tunnel from the main hub to the coal plant. And this will allow the crew to move from the main hub to the plant. Over here we have one of our worker submarines, a construction sub, and it's constructing the coal generator, which it can only do if you have enough resources. So always try to keep enough resources around. Greetings, Overseer. This message is from Command Station. 7861 meters above you. So we're 7.8 kilometers down into the water. We hope you got settled in okay. In the coming days and weeks, you'll need to figure out how to supply power, oxygen and food, and get a stable supply of fuel and building materials. Once basic infrastructure is established, our first big milestone will be a fully functional cloning lab. Good luck, Overseer. The work you're undertaking will benefit all humanity. Let's hope so. Uh, I mean, absolutely, because this is my job. Now, seeing as this deposit has the most resources for now, it seems, I'm going to assign an extra sub. That's an extra mining sub. If you want to get a specific resource quicker, you can assign one of the extra uh, submarines that you have. And I currently have one mining sub idle to one of these resources. So I'm going to prioritize steel. And you're going to have to micromanage this a bit. Because if you don't, then at some point the submarine is going to go, Hey, I mined all the steel and I don't have a job anymore. So tell me what to do. What else? All prior experiments in cloning led to test subjects who suffered from poor health, malnutrition, and could only undertake the simplest of tasks. Your work down here is to fix this. We can fix this. Our time has come. Open the cloning interface, add the designer genomes to the sequence, and begin the cloning process. Well, that's a bit advanced because I don't have an actual functional cloning lab. So let's first set up some further infrastructure. I still have nine crew unemployed, so let's make sure that they have something to do. And uh, seeing as we're at the bottom of the ocean, I think having an oxygen generator is probably a resource that we're going to need. Right now, I'm still generating one more oxygen. Oh, sorry, no, I'm not generating one more oxygen. Uh, I'm just about even. And this one, the central hub outputs two oxygen. So I am getting some of it, but this thing is definitely going to give me more. It will take two crew members, and these two crew members you can either manually assign, or you can um, 
have the game auto assign them for you. What else? We've opted to send down an additional four crew members to assist your endeavors. Before we send them down, we expect the food situation to be stable and adequate housing facilities to be available. Two living quarters and a stockpile of 75 food will ensure you can sustain the larger workforce. Very good. I will prepare the base for further population. So let's say I want to have uh, two habitats like so. And we're going to hook those up with a tunnel. There we go. You got to make sure that these things actually get juice. And tunnels don't do that. You need to have a power grid. So get a power line going from the main building that generates power, which is the coal plant here, to wherever else you think you might need juice. In my case, that is going to be the habitats. And once you see that thing light up, um, like the, the, the pips underneath it, that means that it actually has power. They're currently getting built, so that is in progress, but I'm not actually getting any food yet. So let's make sure that we get something done with food. I'm gonna go to life support, and you got two different ways of making food. You got a carbohydrate food, or sorry, a carbohydrate farm, produces low quality food under UV light. This thing does not take anything from the outside. The protein harvester does. It uses fauna to produce high quality food. So you are eating the local population. Um, this could wear out, but it also means that you're getting high quality food. So this is going to be potentially a bit of a trade-off, but I think I want to be mostly independent for now. So let's unlock the carbohydrate farm and get one of those things built. So carbohydrate farm. Um, yeah, let's just set that up there. You can also, when you like, just connect tunnels like so from here to there and it makes a junction for you. So you don't have to do anything like that yourself. Also, hook it up to the power and good to go. Overseer, we have the utmost faith in you to lead this mission. But a project like this requires many great minds. We're planning to send down a specialist engineer to assist with the setup of the facility. Before we give the go-ahead, we need to see progress. Stockpile 80 coal to ensure the continued success of the mission. Aye aye, that's what we're going to be working on. I currently don't have anywhere near that. I need to harvest a lot more coal. Uh, here, coal, 36. There is, I believe, a bunch of coal near this beacon. No, there isn't. This one? Doesn't have it either. Okay, we're going to have to go out and find some. And in order to do that, we're going to do a bit of exploration. If you want to build outside of your area of light, you're going to have to set up a new light tower. Keep in mind, these things require 5 power per, so make sure you put them in the right location. You can also build, and this is what I'm going to do now, a sonar tower. A sonar tower does not take power and is instrumental in doing further exploration. Um, seeing as I cannot build outside of my light zone, this is as far away from my main base as I can place it. So let's plunk it down there and wait for that thing to get built. And from there, we can start figuring out where there might be a potential resource of coal so that I can use that. One generator is without power lines. Is it really? I thought everything had power. Almost complete. We do have a few resources here. This is a building stockpile. And yep, here we go. Sonar tower. So what do these things do? They allow you to build one of four beacons. Fuel beacons, resource beacons, point of interest, and habitats. Fuel beacons allow you to get fuel. So this is going to detect oil. You also get a resource beacon. Or sorry, I also believe it's going to detect uh, coal, actually. But the building currently isn't powered. So let's provide some juice first. And make sure that this thing actually gets anything done. Alright, so fuel beacon. Once you click on the fuel beacon, you can rotate or you can relocate the mouse. And it's going to go, yeah, you got nothing, you got medium. Uh, there is some resource out there, we just don't know what. It appears to be... Yeah, pretty decent here. So let's deploy one of those beacons. The issue is, you can deploy the beacon, 
and the thing is going to go, uh huh, we've got a small coal deposit, but we don't know where. We have found two fuel items. Okay, there's a small fuel deposit there, small coal deposit, and there is a coal extraction point over here. Look at that, that's really interesting. I need to get in here. But in order to do that, I'm first going to have to expand my light area a bit. Because right now, I simply cannot build there. So, let's hook this thing up as far away from my main base as I can. Let's say I want it about there. I'm down, or I'm going to be down to four power only. So it's going to be fairly limited. And what I'm also going to need from the tech tree is the ability to use that coal deposit using a coal extractor. I only have 30 science available. I'm going to use all of it to unlock this. So it is going to take all of the science that I have. Now, as this thing is going to come up, we're going to get access to this deposit so that I can start mining it, or at least that's the plan. In the meanwhile, the resources that I have are just going to have to make do because I don't really have a way of getting more at the moment. When you're building power lines, try and get these things to be as efficient as possible. Because the farther you go, the longer you make them, the more steel they will take. So keep this in mind as you try and expand your base. There we go. We have an infinite coal extraction point here. This is exactly what I was looking for. Because this is going to allow me to get up to that 80 stockpile. So deploy a coal extractor. And let's rotate that in such a fashion that we have a tunnel point that we can use. No joy. Because it might be nice to have this coal extractor out here. And it does have power. Or rather, it will have power. What it will not have yet is crew. So, time to make a really long tunnel. Oh, we're going to need an elevator. <laughs> I don't have an elevator yet. That's going to be interesting. So that means that right now, I cannot get there. Unless I can find some sort of not too steep slope here. Let's see if this is going to work. If you want to build an elevator inside of a tunnel, you can do that by going into the actual build menu and going to tunnel. So not this little tunnel building here, or not, not the tunnel button, but actual tunnel click, the, the, the tunnel menu. So I want to build an elevator like over there and then I can move on with my tunnel from here and go all the way there. So it's going to be quite the distance but it is going to be required otherwise I cannot get my crew over to the coal extractor. This thing is coming up nicely, this thing is coming up nicely. Does this take power I wonder? It does not. Excellent. Okay. It does not. Okay, so now we have the coal extractor running. We're going to see a couple of crew members highlighted here as they're making their way over to our coal extractor. And once they're there, the coal extractor is staffed. Although it doesn't seem to really need to wait for these guys, it's already getting me coal. So slowly but steadily we're getting coal, and the coal is going to be gathered at a higher rate than we're consuming it right now. But seeing as I only have two power, I'm probably going to have to do something about the coal generator. I'm probably going to have to get another one. What I have seen here is that the efficiency is not that high. And you can boost this by going into the power and getting an upgrade for your coal efficiency. But, well, I don't exactly have the resources to do that. I don't have any research data. So in order to do that, we're going to have to go and get some basic cloning labs operational. Sorry, basic uh, research lab. And this is also going to re require 5 power. So it's going to be uh, all sorts of fun. And it's going to be all sorts of potentially difficult. Oh, this is the generator that's not hooked up. Isn't it? Just the main hub. There we go. The main hub wasn't actually part of my power uh, layout. Okay, so let's get a coal generator again. And let's see, can we... Yep, I can just park those side by side. Add a tunnel. And this thing is also going to get two staff. So I hope that soon we're going to be able to get new crew. I'm going to need to get a bunch more. 
I am about to get this food stability thing, which will give me a bunch more crew. Well, four, but then again, that's a lot more than what I have right now. So, uh, stockpiling like 75 food and just waiting until we get the additional staff in. My high quality food is going down. So, my high quality food storages, as they're not being resupplied, are potentially going to be an issue. Seeing as I won't be able to get these guys new high quality food unless I build the required building. So that's a bit of a factor. Here we go. We got the generator online. We got 14 power now. We are also getting the coal. So we're slowly but steadily working our way up to getting 80 coal. It's going to take me a while longer though. Because I'm getting one. Oh, sorry, I'm getting... Yeah, I'm essentially getting one per day for my stockpile. I'm gathering seven. And I'm using six. It's going to take me a while. As for this resource deposit, uh, let's speed things up here. And are there any additional deposits? I wonder. Oh, there's a bunch of coal out here. And iron. You know what? I'm going to tell one of these submarines not to mine this. But instead to mine the coal here. So that I could start using that additional objective sooner. That's the plan. Subs can't be assigned. Yes, yes, it's fine. So, we're getting coal. We're getting food. We are getting enough en energy to start building our first research lab. But I can't exactly staff that unless I take away one of the crew. Which I suppose is going to mean that it might supply less power. Its efficiency is going to drop. I do, however, free up one worker. That is going to be rather useful, because then I can start working on my research department. And I want to have that one over there. I want to have a tunnel. And of course, we're going to have to hook it up to the power grid. This one is going to get that one worker that I currently still have available. And hopefully with that, we can very slowly but steadily start to generate some research data so that I can start to unlock more and more of the tech tree. That's the plan, anyway. There we go. Poor crew are unemployed. Excellent. So I can um, allow for this slot again. I don't need to... Oh, go away. How do you open that up again? Here we go. And this one is now generating 12 research data per day. So slowly but steadily, we are getting research data. I can add further crew, but only if you have a scientist, and I don't have any scientists at the moment. How you get those, I don't exactly know. What I am curious about is what else is out here. What else can I find? I already used that beacon to find the coal deposit. That was the fuel beacon. Now let's go for a resource beacon and see if there's anything interesting out here. This one's probably overlapping with the one that we already have going. So I'm going to go over here, right to the edge of the operational range of the sonar tower, and deploy a couple more beacons, hoping to find some additional resources. Another one there. Another one here. So there's plenty of resources around, but keep in mind you can only pick them up once. Concrete extraction point. Very nice. That is going to allow me to get a, a permanent concrete resource. Small iron deposit. Small concrete deposit. Quartz. Scrap steel. Small concrete. Iron. Small coal. And small quartz. So we got a lot of resources there. Points of interest. Yeah, there's something over there. Now, I don't exactly have the ways and means to go about that, to research it, because I don't have any research or exploration submarines. Um, if I'm able to get a couple of extra submarines, that would be nice. I can produce a variety of submarines. It's going to take two power. It's going to take a little bit of my, what's that, quartz glass. And it's going to take some steel, about half my steel. It's going to take two crew members, and I only eventually have one available. But I'm getting science, so maybe I can upgrade some buildings so that I don't need as many crew members. Because I would very much like to use my um, exploration submarines to go after, well, the sea mine here, the brine pool. 
have a look. Yeah, I can't see them yet because it's still in the dark. That's kind of the problem. It is still very much inside the dark. Now, what would be the most reasonable upgrade to go for first? Um, using less coal might be a good thing so that I can get up to that objective faster. We also have the ability to start making our own steel using raw iron. And with the drill extractor, I can start using large deposits. They're supposedly slow but efficient. And um, you get one per 40 seconds. It is going to have an impact on the air quality though. So keep that in mind as you're trying to build these additional resources. Population, I can get a garden dome. Provides recreation to the crew. We can get a mess hall. Um, exploration, we can get the docks. Allows transport submarines to move crew to another dock building. So if you so desire, you can set up buildings somewhere else and use the transport sub to start going to that other location. Sort of have a mini outpost, if you will. Speaking of, the outposts helps establish a base in a new area, providing source of light, power and oxygen. This is probably going to be expensive to build. It's going to take a lot of resources. It does not generate... Sorry, yeah, it does generate light, power and oxygen, of course. I'm not exactly sure how much. Here. Uh, four power, four oxygen. So you can get a sort of mini base going out somewhere else. For now, though, I'm going to still focus on the coal objective and working on a genetics lab. In order to get these, I'm going to need one crew member at least. And I also need a fauna trap. These are placed on habitats for harvesting genetic material to be used in the cloning. So in order to actually have something to clone, we're first going to have to use something to clone. And in order to find that, you can use the habitat beacon. There are a bunch of habitats around, apparently. Medium, medium, none. Medium... Doesn't seem to really move anywhere else, so let's just go here. There. Abundant habitat. Habitats contain species that can be harvested for several uses. Power, food, or genetics. So you have a couple of different options about how you want to use this thing. And like I showed you earlier with the tech tree, if you want to, you can just eat them. You can just use a protein harvester and eventually a protein harvester upgrade. So with this, if you are uh, starving, you can just eat the fish. You can just eat the resource. But it's going to go out. You can also eventually use a uh, marine stabilizer. replenishes the fauna population of a habitat within its area of effect. So if you find that any particular type of fish might be going out of fashion, you can just stabilize it using this building and you'll eventually be getting more fish. Now I'm going to skip a couple days until we have the additional coal and until we potentially get more crew members. A few cycles later, oh sorry, <laughs> a few days later, we have the new crew member after getting the AT coal requirement met. Technology is the foundation of our mission. To survive in these conditions and to achieve our scientific aims, we must progress our research capabilities. We're considering sending down another specialist, a scientist this time. First, prove your capability to lead this mission. Unlock tier 2 of technology. Alright, that's going to take me a while. Because I first need to get quite a bit of tier 1 research done. So, research labs definitely going to be more important. I have also spun up this uh, habitat over here. It is a spider crab. And I'm not exactly sure what sort of species that is. Does it tell me? There's kelp forest all over the place. No, I don't think it tells me. So, let's see if I can get a cloning lab operational. Even if I don't have the required amount of crew, um, we're just going to have to make do. This is what we have. We got one guy. It's going to be down to one guy. Seeing as I don't exactly know how well this is going to go, I'm going to place it some distance away from the rest of the buildings. And, well, ideally I'd lock it behind a really heavy door, but I'm not sure if that's going to be either possible and or required. So we'll just have to do this with the resources that we have. As a Subnautica player, there's one 
sort of resource, if you will, that I was kind of expecting. And that is your ability to bolster the structural integrity of your building. The more you build out your buildings, I'd say the, the weaker they get, or at least that's the way the Subnautica does it. You cannot just indefinitely keep expanding. You need to boost your structural integrity, but this game does not seem to have that particular issue. So that's definitely a nice bonus. Now, as for the tech tree, um, what sort of upgrades would I like? We've got the hospital, treats crew with low health to allow them to return to the workforce. How's my crew doing? Health is mostly okay. Hunger is about 50-50. Oxygen seems fine. And their lifespan, I don't know. I suppose this is going to be more important when we get to actual clones. Because, as we've seen in the intro, their lifespan is less than ideal. As for the main population, uh, this is unaffordable right now. The docks to transport to the other building, no thank you. I already got these two. Let's just get the alloy furnace going. And I'm going to have to wait about one and a half days in order to research that. So, up to the cloning labs. Cloning lab number one coming online. One thing I was kind of hoping for is the ability, ability to rename buildings, but that's not a thing at the moment. Here we go. Open genome sequencer. What can we get? Well, not much, because I don't actually have anything except for the spider crab. So, we're going to do that. Um, to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. I need to... I don't know. Nope, I need to use this. Mutations decrease a clone's lifespan. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of mutations. Number of days a clone will live. 63 days. Okay, begin cloning. Commence your cloning. I have no idea how this is going to go. Or how long it's going to take. But seemingly we're progressing. Oh, there we go. 210 seconds. Oh, that's easy. One of the coal extraction teams has found a coal vein unlike anything we've seen before. It is much harder than the rest of the coal surrounding it. Extracting from this vein could result in a considerably higher yield than usual, but it would require one of the crew to descend through the borehole to assess it properly first. Do you think this is something we should risk the crew for? Um, yes, I do. The assessment was a success, however, there was a casualty as a result. The vein was deep, but much less stable than anticipated. One of the crew got trapped when exploring the deposit. They're out now, but we'll need to spend some time in the hospital to recover. Yeah, you know, the hospital, the, the one that we haven't built. That hospital. So, whose health is low? Nobody's health is low. That's interesting. Also, I do wonder, where is my engineer working? Oh, here, in the power plant. Right. And I suppose that massively boosts the amount of efficiency that this thing is going to get. Right. Cloning. What could possibly go wrong? Let's, in the meanwhile, make sure that we can get something done for this uh, injured guy at the coal mine. And allow him to get back up to his usual strength. Let's get the hospital... Uh, medical supplies, hospital. It's going to take two crew, because of course it does. I think this is most likely going to be part of the habitats. So let's place that yeah, here. That should attach quite nicely. Does it have juice? Nope, not yet. Set up a power line like that. Okay, so let's get the hospital built. And um, I'm going to have to pull crew from somewhere. Because I don't have enough crew to staff the hospital. Maybe just to remove one of the guys from the research lab. It's not really something I want to do. But I kind of want to get my crew member back. Oh, and I'm also going to have to look at oxygen. Which is lovely. Remove him here and assign him here. Where did you go? Yeah. <laughs> Can't assign injured crew. Go figure. I thought I had one of the guys removed here. So I guess they automatically went to a different location. Ah, they went to the cloning labs. 
Yeah, no, we're not doing that. You are going to work here. Um, I'm going to pull one from one of the coal generators. No, here. Pull one from the cloning lab. Matt. Matt, you're going to go here. In 14 days? Holy crap. He's worse hurt. Well, yeah. He's hurt a lot worse than I thought. I thought he'd be fine. By the way, if you have any um, research or any building that you want destroyed, and it took me a while to figure this out, click destroy. Right over there. It, there's no delete button, there's no dozer button or whatever, it's just destroy. That's it. Alright guys, that's where I'm going to leave you at this end of episode 1. I am really looking forward to exploring more. The game is in early access, and this means that there might be some issues here and there. We might run into a bug every now and then. Hopefully we'll be able to maneuver around those and continue playing. Let me know if your thoughts are down below in the comments, and I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Thanks for watching, see you soon for the next.